And, you know, on the phone, also, I remember in this conversation, you're short, sweet to the point. You're like, hey, I'm coming over. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so if you don't mind, um, I guess, and this is might be a little bit different, but would you mind like role playing like a phone script with me? Yeah, sure. Okay. Like, like you call me. Yeah. All so right. I'll say a couple things, like my mindset about the script. So first things first, I don't let anybody talk unless I ask them a question. So if they ask me a question, I almost am not listening to it. Like I hear it, but I'm not listening to it. If I do answer their question because I'm still trying to be polite, I'm not answering a question. I'm just addressing their question. See, if somebody asks me how much it costs, I'm not answering that question, but I will address it. And I'll say, perfect, Miss Mary. That's the first thing we're going to cover when I come by tomorrow. So were you working, retired or disabled? See, I'm not answering any questions. I'm just addressing them. The other thing is I don't leave any pauses at all when I'm saying the script until I ask a question that I need an answer for. Because if I leave any sort of long pause, they're just gonna sneak in there and say something that in the beginning, you're not prepared to handle. You're not ready to handle all of these different objections that you get. You can handle just the script and ask them, do they work, retired or disabled? Or, you know, are they gonna be home in the mornings or the afternoons? Or are they, you know, do they work during the day or in the evening? You know how to handle that part of it. But if they start peppering you with all kinds of questions, next thing you know, you're frazzled, you sound like a salesperson, you're a telemarketer, and now they're hanging up on you and they're never buying anything because they don't want to be sold life insurance. So that's my mindset. The other mindset that I have before I ever call a lead is this person half kind of knows me, like we have a connection, right? Because the connection is the lead, they filled it out and I have a license to help them out. Um, but like they don't know me, right? Like I, I don't want to be so friendly that they're like, oh my God, yeah, just give me a call back. Like I'm not that friendly, but I'm friendly enough so they want to hang on the phone with me. I also need to mirror exactly how their voice is. As soon as they pick up the phone, I need to discern immediately. Do they sound old, young, hyper, chill, soft-spoken? Is, is it a grandma? Is it, is it a truck driver? What is it? And whatever it is, I have to be right there to match it because people want to do business with people like themselves. I always tell people, you are not going to get to the same Jamie every person that answers that phone. Because if they did, then I would be a telemarketer, right? Or I'd be a salesperson. Get so excited. And, when it's, and their voices go all high pitch. It's like, it's just right here. We're like, we're just serving families. We're just helping them out because they raised their hand at some point in time. I don't care if it was last week. I don't care if it was, you know, 18 years from, from today, they raised their hand at some point in time and said, I need some protection. And I've got the license and a bunch of carriers that I can do that with. So that's my thought process before I ever start dialing the phone. Now I print my leads out. I take a stack of 30. I'm calling every single phone number three times right in a row. So I have two phone numbers on here. I'm going for the cell phone number first, because that's what everybody has around. And that's what they're answering. I'm, I'm letting it ring three times, hanging it up, calling right back. See, I'm thinking about like a grandma who's sitting on the couch watching Mari Povich and her cell phone's like kind of at a distance, right? And she's like trying to reach for it and she's hit, everything's falling off her lap and then I hang up the phone. But then the same phone number calls her straight back. Now she's like, oh, they must, they must really know me. They just called me two times in a row and now they're more apt to pick up the phone. So I'm calling through just a small stack three times in a row and I'm calling through that stack three times. So at the end of the stack that I have of 30, if, if they have one phone number on there, that's nine times in probably about an hour and 20 minute window. Cause that's about how long it takes to call 30 of those. Okay. So that's kind of like the setup. The other setup that I have in front of me is I have my schedule and every single time slot that I need to fill. I'm going to fill my first day first, and then I'll move to my second day. I also will fill, let's just say I speak to three retired people right in a row and all of them are home during the day. They're going in my morning slots. I'm not offering them an evening slot because I need to leave that open for my people who go to work. I'm also going to stack them in a way that they're kind of clustered. So three retired people are going to go back to back to back, just like that. I'm not going to give this one a nine and this one a three. I don't want to have a big gap in the day. So I'm going to say, okay, I got you down for nine o'clock. And then my next one, if they're home and retired all day, that one's going to be a 10, 15. 
And then if I get my third one who's retired, that one's gonna be at 1130, okay? So that's kind of how we're looking at the schedule when we are sitting down the dial. So leads, phone, calendar, that's it. I'm not shuffling around, I'm not distracted. I am laser focused hurrying up to try to get this dialing done. There is no shot in heck that I wanna spend all day on a phone making phone calls. It's exhausting and I don't even wanna deal with it. I don't like setting appointments that much. Even though I've set a bunch, I don't like it. So, and no one does, right? So why are we gonna turn setting appointments into a darn career? No, we're gonna hurry up and get this knocked out. And I'm, my little butt is not moving out of this seat until I got my day filled up. And that might only take me two hours or maybe it'll take me four. I don't really care, but I am getting it knocked out and there isn't gonna be a single spot on my calendar that is not filled up. I don't leave the house without eight. I don't go out without it. Like there is going to be eight solid appointments on my calendar for the very next day. And I don't care how long it takes, And but my butt is not moving. I'm not up doing dishes, taking a phone call, helping an agent, none of that. Laser focus, all I'm doing is set my appointments because I know that if I got a tight schedule tomorrow, I can win at this thing, okay? So that's kind of like the back the backstory of getting ready to set appointments. So the script is super easy. We have tons of audio on this, so you don't have to feel like you gotta record this right now or whatever, or maybe you want to, but um, super basic. So let's just say we're calling internet leads because we can get those a ton. We've got instant one month, three months. We got all kinds of variety. I call them all the exact same. I don't care if they just filled it out today or three months ago. I'm calling it like they just filled it out. So it's like, um, hey, Marisa. Yeah. Oh, let me, let me, let me do ring, ring. So you answer ring, ring. Hello. Marisa. Yeah. Hey there. This is Jamie Euphemia giving you a quick call benefit center. Just giving you a call back. Looks like you filled out some information on a uh, line about just some basic insurance inf uh, insurance stuff. And our office was just assigned to help you out with that information. Now I've got you here in 21222 zip code, correct? Yeah. Okay, perfect. And um, it looks here that you just put your name on here, correct? Or is there a spouse or a significant other? Um, just me. Okay, perfect. So single. All right. So um, listen, it doesn't take me long to figure this stuff out, what you qualify for. They've got me in Baltimore helping folks tomorrow. Uh, I have a few slots that are still open. You working, retired, disabled? Um, I'm retired, but I think I already got that taken care of. Perfect, perfect. Here's what I need you to do. No big deal. Just have that thing out when I pop by. We'll go through it real quick. Make sure you have the proper plan. So you said you're retired. Was it mornings or afternoons usually better for you? Uh, mornings. Mornings. Okay. I can either pop you in at 915 or 1030. Which one would you prefer? Uh, 915. 915. Okay. And I've got you here. One, two, three Main Street, right? Yep. Okay. And um, any dogs or anything like that I have to be aware of? Uh, no. Okay. Perfect. And the parking, is that on the street, um, in the driveway? You can park right in the driveway. Okay. And um, like when I come there tomorrow at 915, is there like a doorbell or how does that work? You have a ring or anything like that? Uh, yeah. I'll see you on the ring camera. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I will be in a white sedan. And my name was Jamie again, and I've got you tomorrow at 9.15. Please, please, please make sure you jot that down wherever you keep your other important appointments. We want to make sure we don't miss each other. But 9.15 tomorrow morning, and I'll come by and show you what you qualify for. And again, make sure you have that other plan out so we can just make sure it's all set up right. And I will okay. see you tomorrow morning at 9.15. Awesome. All right. Well, cool. and Jamie, what I love there is like you don't pause. Like you literally don't. Like you, I couldn't talk if I wanted to. Like you were like, da -da -da -da. I'm not like it's, I'm in control. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, also the essence of you, like you said, you don't just walk over the question. Like I said, oh, like, I think I already got that taken care of. You're like, that's great. Back on script. So you said you're retired, like no big mm -hmm. deal. So very matter of fact, almost like I'm just doing my job. And, you know, like, and I always it's say it's kind of like, if it's no big deal to me, it's going to be no big deal to them. If they say something to me and I start getting like a little wound up and my voice gets high pitched and I start to get nervous, then they're going to start to feel nervous too. Right. It's like, it's like anything else. Like when your kids like get hurt, like if you were like, Oh my God, you're bleeding. Oh, like acting crazy. They're going to be like, Oh my God, I'm bleeding. Oh. And if, but if you're just like, you're good, we get your paper towel, we get your little band aid, we'll be good to go in about 30 seconds. Let's just get that thing wiped up. We're good. They're going to be good. 
they're gonna think it's no big deal even if the thing's pouring out blood but because my level of excitement was just chill and no big deal it's gonna be just chill and no big deal for them sometimes i do sometimes they start to make something a big deal and i gotta meet them where they're at but then i'm gonna bring them right back down like for instance let's just say oh no tomorrow is not gonna work for me girlfriend uh-uh i got a doctor's appointment tomorrow i'm not gonna be available Okay, no worries, Ms. Mary. All right, what time that doctor's appointment? Well, that's at three o'clock. All right, no worries. Listen, here's what we're gonna do. Um, they've got me out there in the afternoon and I've got either a 4.15 or a 4.30. Which one's gonna be better for you? See, she was wild, but then I was wild, but now I brought her back down to, here we are. We're, we're in control of ourselves, Ms. Mary. We're just gonna do exactly what I'm saying and we're gonna follow my lead here so we can get you protected. So you that's kind of married. like- yeah. Master married. Met her mm -hmm. where she's at. Met her where she's at. Yep. Yep. So super simple. Listen, you're going to get objections. Um, there's tons of objection uh, videos and scripts and things like that. Like master three basic ones, right? Just master three basic objections. Because if you have at least three mastered, you pretty much can handle most of them. The biggest thing with mastering an objection is to handle it quickly. Do not pause and wait for any sort of affirmation that you handled it and move straight back to the set immediately. No waiting, no thinking about it, straight back to the set. So our mornings or afternoons gonna be better for you. So did you say you're working during the day or in the evening? So you were retired, are early mornings best or afternoon? So you can ask in a bunch of different ways, but handle the objection, move straight back to the set. But you don't have to memorize every objection. Just memorize the not interested, the already took care of it, and I don't have time right now. It's super simple for our brain to handle. Absolutely. I think that that's huge because those are the three big ones, right? Like if you can master your way of handling that, redirect, you're going to be good. And mm -hmm. like you said, um, Jamie, like every time that, you know, there's an objection or concern, right? Your rebuttal might not necessarily work every time, but mm -hmm. at least you tried, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you have you can't just hang up the phone. You have to, I always say the rule of thumb is I have to push at least two or three times. If I push two or three times and I still can't get you to set with me, I mean, I almost feel bad for your family because you just don't see the importance of insurance, really. Um, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just fold down after you told me you don't have time to deal with me right now. Because truth be told is everybody wants insurance, but nobody thinks they're gonna die tomorrow and nobody thinks they're gonna be not healthy enough to get it tomorrow. So we do have to push a little bit. I mean, listen, we're pushing people who've already said they want it. So I'm fine with that. I'm not calling my neighbor at pushing life insurance on them, right? Then it getting awkward. These are people who ask for life insurance, but we have to pleasantly push them a little bit. So that way they understand that tomorrow isn't promised. And I'm sure that their family members, whoever will be picking up those pieces, if they don't come home tomorrow, would have been happy that I gave them a little push to get that appointment set so we can get their family covered. 100%. And I'm sure that you can relate, Jamie, even like death claims that you never thought you were going to get. They came like, you know, a week after you, like you were out there and you're like, you know, and th that person tried to push you off, but you just push and you persist. And thankfully you were there. There's yeah. also stories of that vice versa, right? Be the person who pushed and got in there and helped that family and 